Rack five and six. She leads 4-2 in a race to seven here in New York. Come on back. Someone joining us now who is truly happy that this event is going on and very largely responsible for the fact that it is going on here at the Amsterdam Billiard Club. David Brenner joins Don and I in the booth. Um, thank you. We, we have to thank you again for an incredible week here. Gracious host that you are and the people who work here. We have had a fabulous week. Well, and I appreciate the money you've given me under the table. <laughs> I think it, uh, it's, it was very generous. I didn't expect more than a thousand. I'm like shocked, but I'm thrilled. And you can come back here monthly. Well, we, we try. You know, we try to keep all of the people happy associated you guys are great. with the women's tour. Dawn, being the president of the women's association, just turned 12 shades of gray. And yeah. She has no idea what you're talking about. They leave it wrapped up in the bathroom in the toilet paper. <laughs> Thank you for bringing the humor to the booth. But in all seriousness, yes. as we say, yes. you are a great lover of pool. Absolutely. Since I'm a kid, since I'm seven, seven and a half years old, I went to the first pool room. Growing up in Philadelphia, right? Yeah, my father was a uh, numbers writer and a bookie, and he shot pool, and he took me there. And other kids went to, like, you know, you know, they go to, like, children's places. I went to the pool room. They go to museums. You go to yeah, the but I love it. I love it. It's, to me, you know what makes it a unique sport? Is that's the only sport in the world where every, every time it starts, there's a new configuration. It'd be like football players. Sometimes two men on the line. Sometimes, right. so, you know I, what I mean? I don't think they could handle it. They could, no, no. no. This is, it's such a great sport. It takes so much talent. And the problem is they make it look easy. Like, look at that. Right. You know, like, it's so easy. Easy, boom, put it in. Perfect position for the two. Well, Gerda made nothing on the break, and Allison needed that to happen. She's down 2-4 to Gerda in a race to seven. And we talk about this, David, that there is something about New York. There's an electricity here. You know, well, we have championship yeah. fights. You have great uh, concerts. You have all kinds of things well, going it's on. Well, it's the capital of the world. And, and I think the women's uh, tournament, to me, is so much more interesting than the men. I mean, I, you know, I, I, personally, I, I like it better. I think the women bring a certain class to the sport, and and they're great. You know, they don't get that macho up. You know, they don't get they don't go for a shot because of macho. Right. They know it. Oh, that's a bad break. That's a bad break. Surprising miss there. People don't realize that expression comes from uh, billiards. It's a bad break. Bad break. Yeah, it does. People don't realize that. Any other ones we should know about? Oh, there are a lot of them. David Brenner. Yeah, there are a lot of behind the eight ball. There you go. That's another one. There you go. Yeah, there are quite a few. You know some? Ooh, nice. I know that Gerda's going to try to take advantage. Oh, here. is she ever? <laughs> this, is her, this is her moment. And people, you know, who are just watching this and, and don't know a lot about billiards, the whole game is controlling the cue ball, right? Right. Mr. White. Put Mr. White where it makes it easy. And that's something that they do. And a surprising miss dawn there by Allison in the fifth rack. She missed the six and then scratched on the seven. Gerda won that game, came back in the next rack and essentially broke and then ran out and now has a chance again at the table. And this would be for a 5-2 lead and three racks in a row for Gerda and pretty big stuff right now. That's a momentum, isn't it? It big is. Momentum. Gerda has to force the cue ball now down the other end of the table. She didn't leave quite the angle that she wanted, but she's got a beautiful stroke to be able to do that. Just does not want to get straight on the seven. And she's Before shaking her head. Make because... a look. She did get so easy. <laughs> I think she did get a little bit straighter than she wanted to. She still has some angle on it, though. She does. She can force the cue ball around. She's probably going to have to use high left-hand English to make the cue ball go around two rails like this, back down for the seven. That may be the choice here. She just has to watch out for that nine, that the cue ball doesn't hit the nine ball on the way over. Excellent. And she really had to let that wow. stroke out. That's unbelievable. And this is, David, this is what's interesting to me, and you know this as a performer, that you have to be on at certain times. That light goes on, and you better be funny or, or Immediately. Whatever. And their muscles now are, the pressure of it starts to twitch. I don't know if your, your throat starts to twitch when you have to tell a story no. in front of people. Or? No, I, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed, and that makes people think that... You know, it doesn't matter if you're relaxed or not. Some some players are, are very uptight. You know, it's how you perform. Right. You don't. You're not a better player if you're, you know, if you're relaxed. Some need that tension. You take advantage of the tension. Well, Gerda told me that she was on a scale of one to ten at the beginning of this match, a ten in terms of nerves. Um, really? And she said that wow. that was a good thing for her because See, she, she uses knows it. that she really wants to be here. And right now, this is for a five-two lead. 
Look at this. Beautiful touch. That's a great whack there after a critical miss by Allison Fisher. We want to thank David Brenner for joining us in the booth. And thank again, you. for a wonderful week. Please come back here all the time. We love you here. Thank you. I'll we be here you. tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> thank you, David. Thanks. Thanks. We'll be back to New York right after this. Gerda Hofstetter, a 5-2 over Allison Fisher. Being taken away by tournament director Steve Tipton. Look at that perfect rack of nine balls. That is what the roller rack does, and I love that thing. It takes all the guesswork out of it. Great idea. And this idea is very appealing to Gerda Hofstetter at the table again, winning, winning the last three racks of 5-2 in a race to seven over the number one ranked player in the world, Allison Fisher, and Gerda wants to stay at the table. Look at that nine going line. right toward the side. Oh. oh. <laughs> And Gerda with a smile on her face. I think the crowd wanted to see that fall. Oh, oh. Something tells me that. Well, there's a lot of distance in between the cue ball and the one ball, which is what you see here. And I don't know that Allison can see the one. I don't think she can see it to make it. Unless she's going to masse around. It's a dangerous shot because the, one, the nine is sitting so close to the side pocket. You can't really make a mistake here. She's going to just elevate her cue ball and try to scoot right around those balls. Very, very dangerous. And here's what happens sometimes. Just that little bit of extra roll, and Gerda now has a shot on the one. Well, it's where the momentum is in the match. Right. A couple of mistakes that Allison made actually changed the momentum of the match, and now Gerda's really getting all the opportunities. Well, in the last rack, Gerda didn't make anything on the break either, and then Allison had that miss in the 2-4 combination. Gerda wins the rack. Uh, Gerda doesn't make anything on this break, and now here's another chance at the table. So, uncharacteristic of Allison in this situation, but again, we've talked about it. Mrs. Gerda is such a good player and consistent, and right now she's taking advantage of those mistakes. Okay, she's going to hit high English, just bring the cue ball down for the three ball, leaving herself an angle. Perfect. And she I want to see. Great at the table. I want to see. I was just going to say, Don. I want to see how Gerda reacts, because I think this is where, this rack is where she's either going to move forward and win this thing, or she's going to give something back, maybe make a little mistake, and we'll see. I think this is the critical game for Gerda right here. And I think she understroked that ball. If she's going to make a mistake, this may be the spot where she's going to make it. But really, if she were on her home table at home, mm -hmm. the no percentages problem. of her getting out are very, very high. Well, the thing is, what I'm talking about is that, and you know this, you play on the tour, you're top player in the world at certain points in certain matches is when your issues kind of come up and for Gerda against Allison in the finals it's been closing the door and look at this and now we'll see whether she can see that's what I was talking okay about. right now she can't carom the cue ball into the nine because of where the nine's sitting so she can either play a safety playing it you know very conservative or she can try to bank the ball go a little aggressive being ahead in the match by six to two it's really like, how she feels. I she could cut the ball in. Up. She could cut it in. It's really how she feels right now. It's totally... Goes to the safe. I think people in the crowd thought she was trying to make that. Well, she may have tried but to make that and came shot. very short, but knowing where she was going to put the right. cue ball. I think that was her first thought, is where the cue ball is going to end up and where the five is going to end up. But bottom line is she's letting Allison back to the table. Right. We'll see. That's kind of what I was talking about was that as she moves through right now, this is the point where, where Gerda had a little bit of a, of a shaking roll. And you talked about it because with each succeeding ball, she got a little bit further out right. of line and then caused that. Now, Allison playing yeah. safe back. Here she is. Allison puts her in a worse position or a bad position. Now, Gerda has to do something here. Gerda has to either play a safety, trying to keep the cue ball behind the six right here, or, you know, maybe putting the five up there. There's a lot of options here. It's really how she feels, but there's not many places to hide the cue ball where it's easy. That's the difficult part of this. The balls are spread all out over the table. The cue ball control here with the length of the table is not easy to do. This match, very, very important to both players, obviously. Gerda would really love to get this one under belt. Got to watch out for the scratch. There's the mistake. Now, here's where, again, she opens up the door. 
Now the little bit of doubt creeps in. She's still up by three games right now. And it raised to seven. This is where the mind games start. And as we know in all sports, it happens. Allison takes advantage of that hanging nine ball. Roda Hostetter did something she did not want to do in that situation. Give Allison a game. 3-5 now. Allison Fisher. She will be at the break in the ninth rack when we come back to the Amsterdam Billiard Club after this. Right now, Dawn, I can assure you, she's up 6-3. She's at the table. One game away from the title in the Brunswick Billiards New York Classic for 1999. Let's see if this powerful break can yield some results. Well, it was only a couple of tournaments ago that Gerda beat Allison in the finals. So probably the feeling still stays there. She knows that she ha she can win. She has the confidence because she's been there recently. That's so important. She didn't make anything for the third time in a row on the break. Though. Right, and again, like I've been saying, the cue ball is here at this end of the table. It's funny how every play both the players on every break are doing that. The one is up here. A lot of things in between. She's going to push this time, making sure that that 2-9 isn't lined up to make it a short rack if anything were to happen. Yeah, this is a, an interesting, this yeah. right, this is an interesting push because you could thin the one and bring the cue ball back down here. You don't want to make the one because the two is here. And so what's the, what's the object Point. of doing that? She's going to go for something here. Unless she has a, some super stroke that... Maybe just hoping for something to happen. A poking and a hoping. Well, leaves a long shot on the table, about eight feet worth. She can play that one in the, in the corner. The thing that she wants to watch is that the cue ball has the right direction that doesn't knock into these balls right here and leave her stuck at that end of the table. Or if she decides to, if she doesn't feel comfortable with that shot, she can decide to save. But I don't think she will. I think she'll go for the shot here. does we'll have another long shot on the one and this sometimes happens you just get into a situation where somebody is going to make this or play a really good safety and take control of the table well they're playing the shots pretty smart mm -hmm. Allison knew that if she did miss that that there was a chance that she would leave the one ball safe which she did so now Gerda all she needs to do is try to play some kind of safe back what she can do is to transfer, have the one come down this end of the table, putting the cue ball at that end, or thin the one, bringing the cue ball back down here. I think she hit it a lot fuller than she wanted to. I don't believe she wanted to hit the one ball that full. Well, there's well, a lot of traffic here. Yeah, there is. <laughs> this is not the ideal run-out situation. And now, if you're Gerda, you're breathing a little bit a little bit quicker, but she does have a three-game cushion here. And Allison, if you're Allison, obviously you need to make everything from here on in. <laughs> well, you need, <laughs> you need to... all the games. Right. But she can so, do it. We'll see. She can do it. If anybody can do it, she can do it. Two ball is nice. Three ball is something that I'm not sure which pocket she'll end up playing that in. She can, she can follow the cue ball in between the seven and the nine play the three in the, the pocket by her hand. That's what she elected to do. 